Okay. So whenever you're ready. Chen Cheng, I think you're chairing. Uh, I, I think it's Zhenghua, but she, huh. when she's not here, I can start it. Yeah, I, I might have to leave early, but um, yes. So, so, so we're very happy to have uh, uh, Zhenghua from Hong Kong, Hong Kong University, right? Hong Kong University is going to talk about um, 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 he, well, they, they, He's going to talk about his joint work with Alexander um, Polichok and um, well, John, let's start the talk. Okay, so uh, I would like to thank the organizer for the invitation. Uh, it's a great honor to speak on this seminar. And uh, uh, just in case I, sometimes I lose connections. So please, uh, or when I stop sharing my screen, please let me know immediately, okay? So uh, here is my uh, the outline of my talk. So uh, this is a joint work with uh, Sasha Polishuk from University of Oregon. And we have uh, so far three papers and the first two has been published. So I will first uh, recall the construction of Fagan Oleski, the elliptic algebras. And then I will briefly uh, introduce some notions in shifted synthetic geometry and then I will state the main results on the semi-classical limits of elliptic algebras. Okay, so let me start with the definition of fagan odesky algebras. So can you read my writing? Is it clear? Hello? Yes. Uh, okay, okay. So FO stands for Fagan and Odesky. So uh, we start with a complex elliptic curve, which is written as a quotient by a lattice gamma. And uh, we fix some integer n and k, such that k is smaller than n and bigger than zero and they're co-prime. So this is the data we fixed. So uh, we will denote by Cn the quotient of the lattice by n multiple of the sub lattice. So this is, can be identified with the group of n torsion points of the elliptic curve. Um, and we also fix a line bundle on C of degree n. So I denote it by uh, theta L, the space of section of this line bundle. So note that by Riemann Roch, so this space is dimension equal to the degree. And we consider the central extension of the group of n torsion points. By that we mean uh, the group Hn generated by three group of elements. So A, B, and epsilon, where all of them uh, are torsion. So the nth multiple of them is equal to one. Moreover, A, B commutes up to epsilon. So here epsilon commutes with everything. So uh, this group is usually called the uh, Heisenberg group uh, of order n to the three. And uh, here mu, mu n is a cyclic group of order n. Okay, so, uh, and the map from Hn to Cn is sending n to one over n and b to one over n times tau. So I, I would like to uh, define an action of uh, the group uh, Hn. So suppose F 
the entire function on Z, on C, we define the action by, uh, so T one over N acts on F by translation by one over N and the T one over tau acts on F by some multiplier times translation of Z by tau over N. And the action of HN on the uh, space of entire function is given by A sends to the operator T one over N and B sends to T of tau over N. And uh, it's easy to see that epsilon just acts which as a commutator is multiplication by primitive root of unity. So this action uh, makes uh, theta L an irreducible representation of HN. Okay, you can check by uh, take F to be the sections okay, which lift to the automorphic functions on C. Okay, so given these facts, we define a special basis called the theta alpha, where alpha is a cyclic integer, uh, be actually Z basis of this space or this representation satisfy the following two property. First T one over N X on theta alpha by uh, an eigenvector. So E to the two pi I alpha divided by N times theta alpha second, it cyclically permutes the basis by T one over tau. So these two property uh, determine the basis up to a, a scalar, okay? So uh, of course we can write down explicit formula using uh, Fourier series, but I don't need that. So uh, this is a basis I need. And uh, now I am ready to define a elliptic algebra. So Let's now fix a complex number eta. And now uh, we define the elliptic algebra, which is denoted by Q and K and C eta. So C is the elliptic curve. Eta is the complex number we choose. So this is defined to be the uh, quotient of the free algebra uh, generated by an element, mod out uh, idea generated by certain relations. So this relation space will be denoted by rev and k eta. So, so this will be a subspace of uh, the two tensors, which is uh, i.e. quadratic relations. So this space is uh, spanned by the following uh, equations. Okay, so we take uh, R belongs to V over N and theta J minus I plus R K minus one, zero divided by theta K R eta, theta J minus I minus R minus eta and X J minus R X I plus R. So uh, here we take all I J belongs to Z over N. So some of the relation are redundant. Okay, so um, uh, here the eta is used in the denominator evaluating say the functions, okay? So K appears in the lower index, okay? So uh, we take this idea generated by this quadratic relations and take the quotient algebra, that's the elliptic algebra. Okay, so uh, uh, it's an easy calculation to show that uh, this algebra, which depends of course on some continuous parameter and some discrete parameters. But if we fix NK and C, then eta will be the uh, con continuous parameter. And this is a quantization of the polynomial algebra. And uh, quantized in the sense that when eta goes to zero, then this is uh, the 
the space spanned by rel n k zero is precisely the commutator relations. Okay, so uh, therefore uh, we can take the semi-classical limit. Okay, so the semi-classical limit of this algebra when eta goes to zero is usually called fagan odesky poisson algebra or sometimes by a, a abuse of notations i also call it poisson uh, fagan odesky poisson varieties okay so i use the same notation to denote it so it will not depend on eta anymore it just depends on nk and the elliptic curve so indeed, when I say the fagan odesky Poisson variety, I really mean the projectivizations. So note that this is a quadratic algebra homogeneous, therefore the Poisson structure on the affine space indeed descend to the projective space. So when I say fagan odesky Poisson variety, I really mean the projectiv uh, projectivizations. Okay. So uh, fagan odesky claimed uh, in 1995 that Q and K, this uh, semi-classical limit of the elliptic algebra kind of can be identified with some natural Poisson structure on the following space. Okay. With some natural Poisson structure. So here, uh, C and K is the stable vector bond of rank K and degree n. Uh, so indeed, they uh, didn't really uh, give a proof uh, for their result because they, they roughly describe the Poisson structure uh, as a bivector, but without showing it is indeed integrable. Um, so uh, that's why this is really a claim, not really a theorem. So, uh, mm, but, I will describe what is this Poisson structure use a slightly different approach, okay? So in the same paper, they also uh, give some example of symplectic leaves uh, without the proofs. Okay. So uh, the main goal of today's talk is try to understand this Poisson structure, Q and K. Okay, so this is uh, the first uh, part of the talk. Any questions about uh, this algebra? Mm -hmm. I think in the chart there is a question of whether you can be whether you can make your slides available. Of course, uh, when the talk ends, that's easy. But uh, but, but I, I don't I don't quite know. Maybe, maybe there is a comment that it goes a little bit too fast, right? I don't know. Ezra, uh, it's maybe, too fast. Yeah, Ezra, maybe you want to say yourself, right? Oh, it's oh, okay. just so that there were, there were formulas, and if the formulas are going to be important later in the talk, then they really did go past extremely fast. But if they're oh. not important, and if we can just follow the rest of the talk without remembering the formulas, uh, then it's not an important comment. Yeah, so the good news is the, the at least for today's talk, the formula is not very important. Okay, then that's fine then. <laughs> okay. So. Okay, so so uh, now I would, so actually the this is a good point. So indeed, the 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 one goal of the this project is to make this algebra uh, coordinate free. Okay. So the second part, I will briefly uh, uh, mention some uh, recall some notion of uh, shifted uh, symplectic structure. Okay, so I will cheat a little bit to only mention uh, uh, the version of uh, derived scheme, okay? So, so I start with a C, which is an element of CDGA category. So this stands for the commutative differential graded algebra and also negatively graded. Okay, so uh, we will put some assumption on this uh, algebra. So we assume that we assume uh, C admits uh, dualizable cotangent complex. So this is some finite assumption. Let's denote the cotangent complex by LC. But note that 
because C itself carries a differential, its cotangent complex also carries some internal differential, which will denote by DC. So now we define uh, the Duran complex of uh, the CDGAC, which we will denote by omega C. Okay. So it will be defined as the symmetric uh, algebra over C of the shift of the cotangent complex. Okay, so this, so this is shift is inside. Okay, so this will comes with a second differential, which we denote by uh, D of dr. Okay, so uh, uh, in general, if we just uh, take the arbitrary CDGA, when we define the cotangent complex, the general procedure is to replace C by some uh, cofibrant object, which is equivalent to that, and then take the usual uh, module of Keller differentials. Okay, so here we take this to be omega of its replacement. So, okay, so uh, now note that we have already uh, two grading on this theorem complex. One is given by, uh, this upper index, uh, the other one is given by the internal degree uh, for the CDGA. So in order to distinguish these two grading, I would like to call this new one coming from forms, weight, and internal degree by the word degree, okay? So now uh, I can define what is the space of forms, okay? So this word is a little bit vague, so space of uh, P forms of degree K, which is denoted by A, P, and C, K. So this is defined to be, uh, note that this P here is the weight, okay? And K here is the degree. So this is denoted, by, uh, this is defined to be the truncation of oops, oops, omega P, C with the shift P plus K. So here, uh, because omega P carries internal differential, so therefore this truncation is respect to the internal differential, okay? So uh, as I say space, I really means simplicial set. Okay, so this carries a structure of simplicial set. So note that uh, if we look at the, uh, this two differential uh, and it's, uh, weights and degree, we get that dr, the Duran differential is of weight one and the degree one under this definition. And the internal differential on the other hand is of weight zero and degree one. Okay. So, so now we define the notion of closed forms. So the space of uh, closed P forms of degree K. Okay, so this is denoted by A P comma C L C K. Okay. So note that unlike the usual differential geometric setup, uh, this is not a subspace of A P. So this is the truncation of the the Ram complex bounded with the degree bounded below by P with respect to the mixed differential, which is the sum of DC and DDR, okay? So this is the definition of, again, this is a simplicial set of uh, closed P form of degree K. Okay, so now let me give you some, uh, some concrete picture. What does a P form in this setup look like? So note that- okay. Could I just ask a question? Yes. I'm a bit confused because typically in uh, derived geometry, you complete the Durham uh, complex with respect to the, the Hodge filtration, but you're not doing that. Mm, no, I'm, yeah, I don't, I don't take a completion. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So I thought that in, but in all the other literature, there is a completion. So you're diverging from 
other people's complexes? No, I. Uh, you mean com, com, you mean the. Uh, com, well, for example, if you have a coordinate of degree negative one, then its scalar differential is degree zero, and so the question is: Does one take polynomials in it or power series in it? And typically, people take power series in it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure this point. Uh, yeah, I can answer this point, point at this moment. And uh, maybe we can discuss that later. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay. So I would like to uh, give uh, some pictures what exactly a P form looks like, a closed P form looks like. Okay. So uh, just from the degree uh, remark, so we have this a space of P form of degree K. And if we take uh, the RAM differential that will uh, map it to a, uh, as a space of P plus one form of degree K plus one. On the other hand, if I take uh, a, a P plus one form of degree K, uh, the internal differential will send it to the same space. And then we get this, uh, this zigzag picture of maps between uh, space of P form and of degree K for different P and K. Okay. So uh, in elements or a, a closed uh, condition is indeed, so if I take elements alpha zero, alpha one, alpha two, and so on, such that alpha I belongs to A P plus I of C K, then we get that a closed P form is a collection of such elements satisfy the following sequence of equations, which is a dr, ddr of f r alpha i is equal to dc of alpha i plus one. Okay, so this is uh, the, what we get from the definition actually. Okay, so of course this, uh, there is an initial index zero, okay, so and but uh, on the right hand, on the, on the, you can increase in index increase to infinite, okay, to the infinite sequence. Okay, so, uh, and from the definition, we immediately get the following map. Of course, we have a map from omega greater than P to omega P. Therefore, we have uh, the projection map from uh, C, uh, P, close P form to P forms, which is just sending it to the first element, which I write, if I have a P form called omega, I call the projection image omega zero, okay. Okay, so, so this is uh, the general picture of a P form and closed P form. So now uh, we are ready to define what is a synthetic form. So first a closed two form, omega belongs to a, to CL of degree K, of course, here is of degree K is called uh, non-degenerate if the underlying form, which as I said, should lies in uh, A2 CK induced a quasi-isomorphism from TC, which is defined to be the dual of uh, LC to LC shift by K. Okay, so this is uh, the definition of quasi-isomorphs. Okay, um, so now a K-shifted uh, symplectic form on the algebra C, DG algebra C is an element omega inside, which is closed, okay, and non-degenerate. Okay, so this is the definition of synthetic form. And we can similarly define the relative version of that, which is the isotropic structure. So suppose we have a morphism of DG algebra
okay and suppose omega is a k shifted symplectic form on c then we say f is isotropic with respect to this form if its image is homotopic to zero inside the space of closed to form of D. So here, this is given by the tensor product, okay? So, uh, and usually we need to, the data, the definition requires us to fix a particular homotopy, which we denote by eta. Okay, so, so this is the definition for isotropy and uh, we can also define maximal isotropy. So the data is called Lagrangian if uh, the sequence, so here we call the sequence star from the tangent complex of D to tangent complex of C extend by D to cotangent complex of C extend by D to cotangent complex of D. Okay, so this middle arrow is exactly given by the restriction of, uh, or the pullback of the form. And these two are the natural map. And we will require this. So being Lagrangian means this, uh, this complex or this, this triangle is exact. Or maybe a, a better way to say that it's a homotopy fiber sequence. Okay. So I just want to uh, remark that uh, if this is the case, then we're going to get from the exactness a map from LD shift by K to TD shift by one. So I would like to call this map uh, pi zero. Okay, so you see that this is a bivector. Okay, so, uh, so I, I mean, you should think of this pi zero as some kind of shadow of the Poisson structure. Although today I'm not going to define what is shifted Poisson structure. Okay. So, so the derived part, uh, the, the definition of derived part, derived geometry part will end here. Okay, so let me make a few remarks. So first, uh, I, as I said, I was like cheating because I only defined the local version where this is really the symplectic form on affine scheme. So I just, let, let me just remark that the above definition can be globalized to derive stacks with some finiteness assumption. Uh, so I, I, I mean, here, I mean, not only the symplectic structure, also forms, also Lagrangian and isotropic structure, all this definition can be globalized. Uh, and and uh, just one more definition. Uh, suppose we have, uh, okay, so now I can uh, wave my hand a little bit, assuming that we already uh, globalized this definition. Suppose uh, we have two K-shifted symplectic stacks and a morphism from a derived stack to their product is called a Lagrangian correspondence. If as usual, we want this F and omega X minus omega Y. So this will give you a symplectic structure on the product is Lagrangian. So if this is the case, I call this L a Lagrangian correspondence between L, uh, X and Y. Okay, so uh, let me now uh, give applications of these abstract notions to Fagan Odesky algebra. But before that, I need to uh, introduce some further notations. Suppose we have a scheme over field of complex number. I will, from now on, I will denote by vect x, the stack of vector bundles. 
and denote by vect upper z the stack of z graded vector bundles. Okay, and I would denote by perf x the stack of perfect complexes. Okay, so and denote by CPLX x the stack of bounded complex of vector bundles. Okay. So it might be a little bit confusing that what is the difference between the third one and the fourth one? Let me just explain. So a bounded complex of vector bundles just means object like this. It is a bounded complex from left and right. And each element is a vector bundle, okay? So apparently the object looks the same as the, set, uh, the third stack. However, the notion of isomorphism are different. So suppose we have another complex of uh, bounded complex of vector bundles. So in the third stack, the notion of isomorphism is given by quasi-isomorphisms. While in the last stack, it is given by strict chain isomorphisms which means uh, if they are isomorphic, that means that they are term-wise isomorphic. Moreover, the isomorphism commutes with the differential. Okay. So this is a very uh, uh, rigid notion. So compare with perfect complexes. Okay. So uh, it is uh, uh, fairly easy to see that uh, uh, except the third one, all are uh, one stacks. So, but this one is a higher stack. So which means the automorphism do not form a group in general. Okay, so these are uh, the basic notation. So now uh, I'm ready to state the first result. So this is joined with uh, Polish Shuk. So uh, let X, be a projective Gorenstein uh, Calabi Yau default. So by Gorenstein Calabi Yau default, I mean omega x is invertible sheaf. Moreover, it uh, is isomorphic to the structure sheaf. Okay. So here I do not assume x is uh, smooth. Okay. So then. Uh, we can consider the following uh, map from complex of X to graded vector bundle cross perf of X. Here I put the letter R to denote this is a drive stack. Okay, so the first map will be denoted by P, second map denoted by Q. So uh, the P will stand, so given an object in complex, remember that that means it's a bounded complex of vector bundles up to chain isomorphisms. So the P map will send it to the trivial complex, which is de degenerate the differential to zero. So of course, this is uh, uh, same as saying this is just a Z graded vector bundles. And the second map, on the other hand, we consider the object, the same object, but up to quasi-isomorphisms, i.e. as an object in the derived category of perfect complexes. Okay, so these are the maps in the object level. Okay, so clearly this uh, defines uh, a morphism of category. So as a functor of category. And uh, the main result is this is, a Lagrangian correspondence uh, with respect to the uh, two minus D shifted symplectic structure on the target defined by PTVB. So 
Um, so these two, actually the Z grade vector bundle is the substack of, of the second one. So the, the only essential one is in the second component, R perf X. That's the main result of PTVV. Uh, they show that this carries a two minus D shift disimplet structure. So our result just says this map gives a, uh, defines a Lagrangian correspondence. Okay, so uh, I haven't talked about Poisson structure. So, and I, I actually, the, uh, because uh, I want to cheat a little bit, just uh, use an alternative way to, I don't want, I want to avoid to talk about the shifted Poisson structure because eventually I, in this talk, I only care about the classical Poisson structure. So suppose now I restrict the theorem to dimension one case, suppose C is a complex elliptic curve Okay, so which is of course a clavial of dimension one. And suppose uh, M is a substack of this stack of complex on C. So it's a substack such that this is first underived, second, there exists a coarse moduli space such that, so this straight M is a coarse moduli space and such that this map is a GM gerb. In other words, I pick certain nice component of the moduli space, which is first underived, second, it is a GM gerb over its uh, coarse moduli space. So if there is such a component, then recall that uh, I have this map pi in this diagram. Yes, so here, okay, so I have this map pi. So then this map pi from Lm to, so this is a curly M. Okay. So remember that in this case, D is equal to one. So therefore we don't need a shift here because it was k minus one, but k is equal to d equal to one. So when subtract by one, this becomes zero shifted. So this uh, map descends to a ordinary Poisson structure on the coarse moduli space, on straight M. Okay. So if, by this theorem, we go from derived to underived. Okay, but this can only be done when D equal to one, otherwise you will have a shift and uh, there is no classical shifted Poisson structure. Okay, so uh, the next result is, suppose M is a, such a component of the moduli space, and then we fix some points inside the stack of graded vector bundles and another point inside the stack of perfect complex. But uh, I want to take not the ordinary point, but the stacky point. Okay, so by stacky point, I mean, I want to consider or take into consideration of the automorphs. Okay, so maybe the rigorous way to say that is the, the classifying stack of the single object as a subcategory. Okay, so if we do so, then we will have the following fiber diagram. Okay, so then the fiber diagram, the fiber product. So we, we take, so remember that we have uh, M maps to R vec Z, the graded vector bundle stack by P map, which maps to also perf by the Q map. So because I fix uh, this stacky point X and fix a stacky point Y, I can take their fiber product. Every fiber product is uh, in the homotopic sense. So I take the fiber product denoted by MX and here denoted by MY. And further, I take the fiber di product of this upper diagram. Okay, so the claim is this fiber product is zero shifted symplectic. 
Okay. Actually, uh, these two map are also uh, they are co-isotropic. So, uh, so by this theorem, we will see in particular, if we care about either MY or MX, uh, M, 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 yeah, M, actually, if we care about this, this M here, so this, this is a stack, right? So the core, we're assuming it, it is a GM gerbil over its coarse modular space. So in particular, all symplectic leaves in the, in the classical sense of the stack or of the moduli, of the coarse moduli space, the scheme, okay, can be realized as a coarse moduli scheme of such fiber products. So in other words, this theorem in the derived sense classify the symplectic leaves of straight M. Okay, so, uh, so, so far this is still uh, abstract uh, theorems. So now let me go back to Q and K. Okay, so what is exactly the moduli construction correspond to Q and K? Okay, so this is uh, the third part of today's talk, applications to Q and K. So note that Q and K uh, is the classical object in classical Poisson geometry it has nothing to do with derived geometry, but it turns out that uh, classification of synthetic leaves uh, might be most efficiently viewed as uh, via the derived geometry. Okay, so first, this moduli space, again, I have used my notation. I, by Q and K, I really mean the projective space with the Poisson structure, okay? So this can be identified with the following moduli space of complexes. So I consider a two-term complex on elliptic curve, okay? So where, uh, uh, v is, so O is the structure sheaf, and V is a vector bundle of rank K plus one and degree N. Moreover, the quotient of this map is isomorphic to some stable vector bundle of, of degree N and K. So here we fix this stable vector, bundle, okay? So, uh, and this is clearly a moduli space of a uh, component of modular space of complexes. Okay, so indeed it is uh, some can be written as a fiber product here. Okay, so you fix uh, one term to be OC and you fix a quotient to be C and K. So this is actually one of the fiber derived fiber pro, uh, of, of this diagram. Okay, so uh, and as a consequence of the general theorem, this carries a Poisson structure and we verified uh, in the k equal to one case that this is indeed the Poisson structure given by the semi-classical limit of capital Q and K. And also it coincides with the Poisson structure by vector given by Fagan Odesky. If you assume their uh, claim, then this gives you the identification between the Poisson structures and the brackets given by their formulas. So, but moreover, uh, using the fiber product of this uh, upper corner, you will get that symplectic leaves of Q and K is in one-to-one -one correspondence with such moduli space, which is uh, a moduli space of complexes with one more condition. So in the, in the, in the big moduli space, you only require the quotient to be isomorphic to some stable vector bundles. But now we want to fix isomorphic type inside the stack of vector bundles. Okay, so in other words, you look for any given a fixed isomorphic type of a vector bundle, not stable, sorry, it's the arbitrary vector bundle. And you look for all maps phi so that the quotient is isomorphic to a given stable vector bundle. This gives you a substack and from the theorem, this is a uh, zero-shifted symplectic uh, stack, while 
uh, you can also show that uh, it is a GM gerb uh, over a coarse moduli scheme and it descends to a ordinary synthetic structure on its coarse moduli scheme. Okay, so, so this question uh, kind of give you a concept, uh, sorry, this result give you a conceptual way to understand the synthetic leaf of this uh, Q and K. Okay. So it turns out that the synthetic leaf uh, has a quite complicated geometry. For example, uh, there are, um, the, 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 you already see that from this description that the, the moduli space, the, there are infinitely many synthetic leaf of uh, a given uh, type, while the, uh, each synthetic leaf uh, if the dimension is bigger than zero, it's rational. This is also uh, proved in our theorem. And, and the moduli space of synthetic leaves uh, can be identified with the stratum of uh, the um, moduli stack of uh, uh, vector bundles on elliptic curves. And moreover, uh, the, the discrete uh, type of the synthetic leaf is given by the hardened array Seaman filtration of uh, vector bundles. Okay. So th actually the structure is uh, very, very rich. Okay, so, so now let me- Could I, uh, could I just uh, yeah. ask a very quick question? Yeah. So you mentioned yes. this gerb uh, in, at the stack level, and I'm wondering since it's a symplectic stack, if uh, there's a derived coordinate, which is somehow Dabu, uh, you know, canonically conjugate to it. So actually first, if it is a gerb, uh, actually the symposium case and the synthetic is slightly different. So if the synthetic one, if it's a gerb, then it must have something non-trivial for the derived directions as well. Oh, uh, yes. So, okay, so the answer is, yeah, okay. And you can you kind of identify that derived direction or it's, simply known to be there by the theorem. Yeah, so in the end, to get the classical thing, it is slightly more complicated than the Poisson case where you don't have any derived directions. Yeah, so okay. you have to do some base change to kill the gerb part and the derived part at the same time. And this oh, is what yeah. you need to do. Okay, okay. Because the derived direction is in effect a, a sub locus of the symplectic, of the course moduli space, isn't it? If you have, uh, if you have some coordinate, if you have some function of, of grading negative one, then it's differential will give you an equation. So I'm just wondering. Yeah, so you have to do it. I, I think you, what you mentioned is basically you have to do two steps. If I've, you have to first to remove the derived part and then you pass with the course module. So you have to do oh, this oh, two steps. Yeah, I you see. cannot I, do it. Yeah, 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 sorry. Okay, okay, great. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the, the last part of the application is about the bi-Hamiltonian structure. So let me first briefly define, this is a very general definition. So let me just focus on complex category. So we have a complex manifold is called a bi-Hamiltonian uh, if there exists two linearly independent a uh, Poisson bivector, which I call pi one and pi two. Okay, so this is a bivector uh, such that they commute with each other. Okay, so this is respect to the Scalton bracket. So uh, an, another equivalent way to say that is any linear combination of pi one and pi two are also integral. Okay. So uh, of course, this is a, a, a strong condition because this is a nonlinear equation, um, but it turns out that this notion uh, is very useful in the uh, study of integrable systems. Uh, and many integral systems indeed carry such a bi-Hamiltonian structure, okay? So uh, the second application of our uh, result is on the existence of uh, bi-Hamiltonian structures, okay? So uh, let me state the result first. So oops, Q, 
Oops, what happens? Okay, so Q and K are bi Hamiltonian in the following cases. Okay, so case A, if K equal to one, B. So K, remember K is the rank of the bundle. So when the rank of the bundle is one, and, but ends can be still uh, big, right? So this can be a projective space of arbitrary dimension. If K equal to one, this is bi Hamiltonian. And or if NK belongs to the following two categories, So here uh, M is an integer bigger than two and bigger than three. Here Fn is a Fibonacci number. So if Nk equal to this pairs, then the corresponding Q and K are bi Hamiltonian. So the last class that we were able to prove is when N is equal to plus or minus one mod K for odd K. Okay, it might look very strange that why it holds for these classes, but actually the conjecture is this holds for any NK, but we, all, we are only able to prove these three cases so far. Okay, okay so uh, let me, uh, because this, is a, this last result is a relatively new result. I would like to uh, briefly mention uh, the proof because the proof contains something new, okay. So the, the, this previous result of what proved in the first two papers. So, uh, so actually Roger, in general- can I ask you, hello? Yes. Roger, the, yes. The, set, the other Poisson structure, I suppose it's not linear or anything, right? It's uh, what is the, any, can you say anything about the order? Which which Poisson um, structure you, you mentioned? The one that you've been talking about, the fake and Odesky is quadratic, right? Yeah, it's a quadratic, yes. And then the second one? Wh which second one? You said it's by Hamiltonian. This, this is the uh, here. What, when I when I say it is by Hamiltonian, I mean it, it can be extended to by. It means like the, there exists a family, linear family, containing this particular fake Odesky one, which commutes, which. Right. So uh, the one of them is the fake Odesky one. So so when right. I say by Hamiltonian, there is one pi one is the fake Odesky one, but there is another. There is a linear family, which all of them are Poisson and yeah. So that's, that's what I mean. Right. So, 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 any, is, so, so the other, so any other from the family, which is not, that's a linear independent from the Feigen or Feigen yes. Feigen or Desky, um, yes, yes. what is, is, I suppose is algebraic, right? Uh, if you do it on, on the, on the, on the, on the uh, affine space and not on the projective space. So the, it's, the, uh, it, no, oh, they are all quadratic. They are all yeah, quadratic, quadratic. structures. Oh, sorry, sorry. They are all quadratic. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, oh, wait, but but okay. the non-trivial thing is they they commute. I mean that that's of course the non-trivial part. So uh, they're not just a family of a Poisson structure, but they are a family of co compatible Poisson structures. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, I, I would like to uh, briefly mention the idea of the proof because I think this, this is contains some, something uh, new. So, uh, so uh, the, the first, uh, actually the, the our, this derived geometry allows us to put this question of finding compatible Poisson structure in a geometric framework. So uh, the basic idea is we, we start with some family of Gorenstein Calabial curves. So this is a family of Calabial curves. Okay, so here we allow singularities so it's Gorenstein Calabial curves. Okay, so by that we mean the fiber are Gorenstein Calabial and so geometrically connected. And with one more condition, so uh, the relative uh, dualizing she uh, uh, the relative dual uh, canonical uh, sheaf is isomorphic to some pullback. From the base, okay. So uh, and 
we consider some vector bundle u. Okay, so this is a vector bundle on C with the following property that the derived push forward of this vector bundle is trivial. Okay, trivial means it is some vector space tensor with the structure shift in the base. Okay. So uh, given this data, we can apply the relative version of our uh, theorem. So the relative version of our result uh, gives the following. So we can consider the relative moduli space, okay, which parameterize uh, the complex, sorry, this should be u, uh, v, yeah, sorry, v. So this uh, vector bundle on the total space and such that the quotient is isomorphic to this given one, u. Okay. So this is the relative moduli problem over B, okay? So uh, using the, uh, again, the work of PTVV, we were able to prove that this relative moduli space of complexes carries a zero shifted Poisson structure. Okay, sorry, I eventually mentioned this term, but without the uh, definition. But anyway, as I said, I only care about the dis descends to the coarse moduli space. So this descends to a relative Poisson structure in the classical sense on the coarse moduli scheme. Okay. So this means the fiber wise, it is a Poisson manifold. Okay. So, okay. So now let me describe what exactly this bundle U is. So if I fix the point in the base, then the, the, Fiber wise, this moduli scheme is coarse moduli scheme is simply just the, uh, the projectivization of the extension. So here, lower B means I restrict to the fiber. Okay. So, uh, but from our assumption, because we're assuming U is a trivia relative to B, i.e., push forward to a trivia bundle. So we can further identify this with projectivization of this vector space and the dual, okay? So uh, in other words, so this relative uh, Poisson structure can be interpreted as a section. So this relative Poisson structure is same as a section of wedge two of T of P projectization of W dual box tensor or with this line bundle LB over the space, which is a product of the project space and the base. Okay. So you see that this gives you a family of Poisson structure, but remember that the Hamiltonian, bi Hamiltonian condition is more than that. It says that it needs to be compatible so in particular, that means we should choose B to be certain projective space and choose this line bundle to be the uh, hyperplane bundle, okay? So uh, and in this way, we can get uh, compatible Poisson structure, okay? So, but, okay, so how do we construct such B? So I will explain that in the final minute. So, so now, we take S to be some smooth projective surface such that uh, it has a smooth anti-canonical divider. So for example, we can assume the uh, anti-canonical linear system has dimension at least two, okay? So uh, now I can consider pi to be the anti-canonical linear system, right? So I can just uh, take the family of anti-canonical dividers so now to get the desired vector bundle, so I remember that this is not the arbitrary vector bundle, we need a vector bundle which push forward to trivia, right? Otherwise we will get the family of Poisson manifold, but this Poisson manifold itself will vary. And we don't want that. We want the same Poisson manifold, sorry, same manifold with the variation of Poisson structure. Okay, so uh, uh, one easy way to do that is to choose a pair which is called a strong exceptional. 
Okay, so where O is a structure sheaf of C and U is a vector bundle on C. So being a exceptional pair means there is no extension. So the, the, the extension from U to O is completely trivial and the extension bigger than zero OC to U is also trivial. The only existence morphism is in degree zero and in one directions, okay? And also we're assuming that the fiber degree such that the fiber degree of U is bigger than zero, okay? So then from the construction, we will have a map from the space of uh, anti-canonical sections to this space of bivectors. So here we take from our construction is precisely the uh, projectization of the space of section of U and then the bivector, okay? So this gives a bi-Hamiltonian structure. Okay, so uh, the only uh, problem is that how, for which n and k can we construct such a exceptional pair? So, and this is why we are only able to prove some cases because in general, uh, if you want to construct for all n k, you need uh, some to construct some exceptional pairs on some very, uh, so for example, on the trapezoidal surface of arbitrary degree, and in some case we were not able to find them. And of course, the conjecture is uh, all Q and K should be bi Hamiltonian. Okay. In fact, what we find is more than a bi Hamiltonian. Actually, really, we in each case we find a uh, certain dimension of uh, vector space of uh, uh, bi vectors which are all commutes with each other. Okay, so uh, that will be. Uh, End of my talk. Thank you very much. All right. Are there any questions or comments? You can either unmute yourself or raise your electronic hand. Um, yeah, I, I, I got a somewhat naive question. I, I have a vague memory that uh, for for those um, um, for those bi Hamiltonian structures, sometimes from two you can generate an infinity of them. But I don't quite remember. Is the condition that one of them to be non-degenerate, or how, how does it play here? Do you do you get pairs, or do you get like an infinite tower? Uh, I mean, of course, you can take uh, if you have two, then you can take any linear combinations. Do oh, you mean the linearly oh, no, independent no, no. ones? Or? Oh, okay, that, that's true. But I, what, what I mean is, uh, I, I, I kind of uh, uh, don't, don't quite remember. Maybe other people in the audience remember better. But I think if uh, in some way you can uh, take a ratio of them, then you get an operator which allows you to, to shift to go. To, to construct many more, like a priori infinitely many uh, non-trivial uh, puzzle structures. That, does it does it work like that here or not at all? Uh, maybe you mentioned uh, what you mentioned is uh, relation to complete integrability. Uh, it, is, it is related, of course, uh, to complete integrability. But uh, but there, this would be uh, just uh, just uh, I, I was thinking just of a family of those. Or yeah, can I, can I, there's a paper of Kosman, Schwarzbach and Magri, which explains this. So exactly as you say, the ratio is a nine house tensor. And so you can, it, in fact, the commuting Hamiltonians are the eigenvalues of the nine house tensor. Right. That's one way of phrasing the story. Okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I think Marguerite has a, a this paper exactly explains the relation between this and the complete integrability. And there is a construction of this conservative quantities using the ratio, I think. But in your case, is there a ratio or can one define the ratio of the two Poisson tensors or, or, or not? 
Uh, no, we haven't really uh, think in that direction. So, so this paper is really to construct this uh, commuting uh, by vectors. I mean, whether this leads to some geometric structure that I, I, I we haven't studied that yet. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yes, uh, this is Tudor. Anton, you are absolutely right. That's how it works. And Ezra said it, it's, it's in the very old paper of Yvette and Franco. My question is, uh, usually when you have... Oops. Hello? Tudor? Tudor? You got cut off at the most interesting. Yeah, yeah right, kind of. Uh, okay, but hopefully he will come back. Maybe in the meantime, there are other questions or comments while we are waiting for Tudor to reconnect. Well, it's a little bit unfortunate that we... Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree that um, finding a hierarchy associated to by Hamiltonian's uh, situation would be interesting. But 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 Yvette, maybe you you can remind us: are, are there conditions? Suppose you have those two commuting Poisson structures, but to to construct the full tower, do you need one of them to be symplectic, or or, or what, what what are the conditions? How yeah. what do you need to Yes, I think uh, to build a Nienhuis tensor, you need one of them to be invertible indeed, yes. And, and in the yeah. case of hand, is it, is, is it the case? Sorry? Uh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, uh, that, that's my, that, that, this is my question to the speaker. Would, would one of them, or one linear combination, be uh, symplectic, or at least uh, symplectic on some uh, dense subset? Uh, no, because uh, you see here n can take, so the dimension of q and k is as a projective space is n minus one. n can take any value or for example, n is even, then it's not generically symplectic. So for n is odds, we, we know exactly for which k it is uh, generally, generically symplectic. And yeah, so, and uh, but if you want it to be completely, uh, I mean, it's only, there's only hope that is generic synthetic. Certainly it's in general, it's, it's, it's always never, it's never synthetic for any NK, but they might be have a unique maximal dimensional synthetic lead. That's, that's possible. Yeah. Well, I think that already would be a very good start, right? Then on that leaf, you, you can, you can start this, uh, this tower or this, uh, this, this kind of hierarchy structure and then you will see what happens. But pro probably this means that the other Poisson tensors you are constructing, this, they will be some kind of singular Poisson tensors. Right. Yeah. So, for example, we know yeah. that if if uh, q uh, q n one, for example, for all n odd, is generically symplectic. This is known. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So in this case, also we have already proved it is always. By Hamiltonian, actually, there is a, a nine. Uh, there is a ten-dimensional family of uh, commuting Poisson brackets. Not only two, but uh, ten. Okay. So this one's which one's generically symplectic? They fall into uh, for n, n uh, k equal to one and n odd. Okay. For example, q three one, and this is the simplest one. So space is p two. And then you have the, the two type of leaves. It's a two leaf, which is a complement of a, a smooth elliptic curve. It's a complement of smooth elliptic curve. And the points on the elliptic curve is a zero leaf. So in particular, it's generically uh, symplectic. Okay, thanks a lot. So how is it Tudor? Do, do you hear us? Do, do, do you want to continue your question? Tudor? 
students. Yeah, sorry. So it, it looks like today is not the day when we learn what the, the intriguing question was, but uh, well, what to do about it, right? Sometimes technology fails that we pro probably have to accept. Um, all right, are there any other questions or comments? Oh, uh, Tudor wrote in chat that he can hear us and see us, but uh, it's not reciprocal, Tudor. <laughs> uh, Tudor, do you want do you want to type your question in the chat if it's a finite length length question? Um, then then we can we can discuss it. That that would be great. Um, yeah. So let's assume that Tudor is typing the question. He says, "Do you have in, uh, do you have examples of integrable systems?" Uh, <laughs> no, no, we, we 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 haven't studied that. So, uh, uh, yeah, maybe as uh, suggested uh, by uh, Alexia, the first example one should look at is QN one for n odd, where uh, there is a unique leaf, and one can look at this bi Hamiltonian structure. What does that give you? Yeah, but we, we don't have, uh, uh, I mean, okay, so maybe I should mention that uh, in the original paper of uh, uh, Sklianian, uh, so Sklianian, the, the, the first example of this uh, elliptic algebra is a Q4 one, where in his paper, he gives some uh, example of integral system. Maybe one should look at uh, his paper, so, but we, we haven't really uh, looked at that part in 1982. But, but I guess this, this means that Sklanin, he also has some natural function that he's using as his first Hamiltonian, right? Is it, is uh, it? Yes, so, for, but this one, this case actually, it's, this is not generically symplectic. Mm -hmm. this, this, case, this case is not generic symplectic. There are, uh, in this case, he has the 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 the, the, the this this maximal dimensional simplicity if it's two dimensional. Does that? I mean, do you is that a problem or not? Uh, no. Then then of course you can choose uh, almost any function, right? So, but yeah, yeah. No, no, I don't. I don't think it's a problem. Of course, it makes it maybe uh, somewhat less non-trivial, right? But. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm not. Uh, ex I don't know enough about this universe just to answer this question. Yeah, so sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other questions or comments? So, if not, uh, thanks again for a great talk. Thank you. And next week, uh, we have Tobias Diaz, who is speaking on the schedule, which is uh, three hours later than today, right? Which is whatever, 5, uh, five fifteen in Europe, and then uh, the corresponding shifts in other places. So, well, thanks a lot uh, uh, to our speaker. Thanks a lot, everybody, for participating. So I'll see you next week on Global Poisson. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Sorry, Anton. I, my, my screen just kept uh, uh, freezing, so I couldn't. Yeah, yeah, no, but I, yeah, I, I okay. understood that probably something, uh, whatever, some, some